Good Thursday evening, everybody. David Paul with you uh, here in the KHO ULIM Weather Center. Uh, welcome to your 8 p.m. tropical update live on Plus and across our social platforms. And we've got a lot to talk about. First of all, Hurricane Center has updated the chance for this spot in the Gulf to develop from 40 to 50 percent just in the last half hour. So that is the latest development. They think it's gotten a little better organized or will have a chance of getting a little better organized before it runs out of land. Now the thing about this is and we talked about this last night, really the only impediment to this becoming a named tropical system is that it is going to run out of, of water very quickly before it really has a chance to develop. If it had more time over the warm waters of the uh, Gulf, I think it would have a decent chance of developing into our uh, next named system. But the, chan the change this evening is up from 40 to 50 percent chance that it develops overnight or tomorrow. This will make landfall either in uh, northern Mexico or deep south Texas as we head into tomorrow afternoon. So about 24 hours from now, it will be moving inland and that will be the end of its development chances. But it is going to drag in a tremendous amount of tropical moisture with it and it is going to be a heavy rain threat across the Texas Gulf Coast and in the central Texas. We'll go over that in just a minute. Sea surface temps in the Gulf, very warm, you know, 87 degree sea surface temps here in the southern Gulf where this thing is trying to develop 88 out ahead of it. These are buoy temperatures. These are live temperatures, so not just satellite estimates. Look how warm the water is off the Gulf Coast of Florida, 90 and 91 right now. It's bath water, and it gets like that this time of the year. But just because you have warm water doesn't mean that every disturbance is going to develop. If warm water meant we'd have a lot of storms, we would have all kinds of activity in the Gulf, and we at the moment don't have anything officially developed except for our tropical disturbance. You remember this was a wave that came across the Yucatan last night, emerged in the morning, and then has just kind of taken a little track like that as we move through the southern Gulf of Mexico. Upper level winds are moderately favorable for development. Uh, it just hasn't been able to get it to act together. It has been, the uh, convection has been outrunning the surface wave this, uh, this afternoon. That's one thing that has not helped, and you can see you know, when you see the uh, bright, thick red cloud tops, that means it's really gaining some strength. But then notice how everything lightening up as we go into the evening hours. So it's weakening right now. It's going through a bit of a weakening phase. I think things will flare up again by tomorrow morning. And at that point, it'll still be over the open water somewhere in here at that point as it's moving north northwest. And we'll have a 50 50 chance of developing before what there is that makes landfall as we head into tomorrow evening. Uh, they flew it today. Hurricane Hunter was in there, came and went, went back to Malak, Biloxi, Mississippi. Now it's sitting there on the ground refueling. Uh, I wanted to show you this, and I had some questions in the newsroom about this. The pattern that they fly, it looks like there is a pattern. It looks like they've got a triangle here, a triangle here, a triangle here, and that's exactly what they do. This pattern has a name. It's called a figure four delta pattern, and that is a pattern that they often fly in storms like this that are developing or haven't developed yet. And they fly this to try to find a center if they can find a center of low pressure. They were unable to find a center. Uh, and uh, so they flew out and that's why it hasn't been upgraded to a tropical depression, but the chances of it developing have gone up to 50%. Spaghetti plots have been very consistent. They continue to move what there is of a center into South Texas, Northern Mexico. I say what there is of a center. So surface winds are curling in from the west, uh, from the south and southeast, and they're curling in here and they're curling in here, but on this side, they're not curling in. Everything is flowing this way. So what you have is a wave and not a closed low. So this is called an open wave. And until it gets a closed circulation, it will not be upgraded to a depression or tropical storm. If it does, it would be upgraded. So this is a rainmaker. And even if it were to become a tropical depression or weak tropical storm in the next 24 hours, this is a rainmaker. Uh, but these weak tropical systems notorious for dumping a lot of rain. This is future track going into 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We may have an isolated shower here and there, but you can see the bulk of the rain will be near our developing system down across the northwest gulf toward Brownsville. That's 7 a.m. We'll go into the afternoon and look at the 
the swoosh of tropical moisture that comes in. So we will see numerous scatter showers and thunder showers in here tomorrow from lunchtime through the afternoon with the tropical moisture coming in. When I say tropical, I'm not just saying tropical because it's coming from the tropics. A tropical atmosphere is defined as one that is near saturated from top to bottom, uh, from the bottom of the atmosphere to the top of the atmosphere. Uh, when you have a tropical atmosphere, it means that if you get convection thunderstorms, it will have a tremendous amount of moisture to ring out. And so tropical atmosphere equals the possibility of some very heavy localized showers. And I think isolated street flooding is our biggest threat. That's three in the afternoon. And at that point, whatever low is trying to form is going to be interacting with the coast, and that'll be it as far as its chances for development. But watch this. The remnant low, you can see it spinning there moves right into San Antonio and it's going to move into the hill country. That's by 530 AM Saturday morning. So Friday night into the wee hours of Saturday morning, the remnant low, sometimes what we call it in, in meteorological terms is a core. The core low is going to still be still be going and will have tropical moisture to feed off of. This is a flash flood threat for the hill country and central Texas. It just straight up is. And they're on watch here. We already know uh, the governor already posted a state of readiness because of the possibility of flooding from this system. These weak tropical systems notorious for bringing in the tropical atmosphere, which can ring out really heavy rain and thunder. It was a tropical atmosphere brought in by weak little tropical storm Barry earlier in the season that went into Mexico, but the moisture came up through Mexico came into the hill country, hooked up with a little stationary trough, and that tropical atmosphere saturated is what led to the heavy rainfall rates and, and the flooding that took place there. It was a key component in it. So this is Saturday morning. We will be watching carefully the hill country. By midday Saturday, watch what happens in southeast Texas. We get a lot of rain and scattered showers going by midday Saturday, and then Saturday afternoon we'll keep a chance for scattered showers and thunder showers going here in the Houston area. When we look at rainfall modeling, it doesn't look that impressive. And most spots will only get a quarter to maybe a third or a half inch. But some isolated spots will see more. So isolated street ponding is the threat. And again, we'll be watching for the possibility of some heavy rain in Central Texas. Atlantic is warm. Temperatures are running a little bit above normal across the basin, so there's plenty of warm water out here. And we've had five named systems. Andrea, Barry, Chantal, Dexter. Again, Barry was the one that went into uh, Mexico, Tampico, Mexico, but then the moisture came into Texas for the flooding rains that we had. Aaron is our latest tropical storm. It's the one that's out in the open Atlantic. It is just about to become our first hurricane of the season. Here's the big picture. There's Texas, there's Florida. That's the spot we're watching in the Gulf. And then that is healthy looking tropical storm Aaron. And this one with the, with the central dense overcast I'm seeing here, this one is just on the, on the border of becoming a hurricane. So the center is right in here. Um, very symmetrical looking right now around the potential center. There's no eye yet. Tropical storms don't get eyes, but uh, strong cat ones into cat two, you'll see an eye open up when that happens, and we expect that will happen with this one. Moving west at 17, pressures at 999 millibars. It becomes a tropical storm and then cat one hurricane tomorrow, and then as we go into the weekend, goes through cat two and then cat three, and 125 mile an hour sustained winds in a cat three sitting right here as we head into early next week. Now, the great thing about this forecast track, several things. It misses the Caribbean. It misses the Gulf. It misses the lesser and greater Antilles Islands. So it misses San Juan, misses Haiti and the Dominican Republic, misses the lesser Antilles Islands, and misses the Bahamas as well. And it is likely it's going to shoot the gap between Bermuda and the Outer Banks. This may end up being a complete fish storm, although it's going to make for some big waves on the Atlantic coast. Modeling the American and the Euro have been very consistent. They're both running here simultaneously, and now they're really lining up. The center of the American model right here, the center of the Euro is right there. There's Bermuda, Outer Banks. So they get a lot of surf here, but that's about it. The surfers are going to love this situation. 
uh, and sold everybody who owns a home here because it misses and heads on out to sea and brings in some wind and waves to Halifax and St. John's into Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And eventually this will send uh, wind and waves over to Great Britain. Why is it moving that way? Here's our spot right now moving west as it's moving around that area of high pressure. Watch it, it continues to move that way. And then what actually happens is it gets underneath a ridge. And that's one of the reasons why it's gonna explode at intensity right here. Underneath a ridge where it's not in the flow here, it's not in the shear, it's an unsheared environment underneath the center of a ridge. So that will allow this to blossom. But also there are other factors working with this. First of all, the Coriolis force because we are a rotating sphere objects that are moving in the northern hemisphere want to bend to the right. So this wants to go poleward and it is working its way poleward underneath that ridge of high pressure. But also see the trough here, the dip? So this is going to, as this gets closer to it, that's gonna feel it and pull it into that trough. So two factors there to bend it to the north. That's Sunday, we go into Tuesday and watch how it's getting really close to this troughiness. And from here, it is going to see it begin to accelerate. So it really begins to feel that trough. Another ridge of high pressure strengthens here. So it gets caught in the flow around the ridge and that flow from uh, west to east in the upper levels from that trough. And that will have it zipping off into the North Atlantic. And that'll be the end of that. So Friday here in Houston, rain chances get going a little earlier. I've got a 20% chance in the morning, 30% chance by noon, 60% chance in the afternoon. Some of these downpours will be heavy because it's going to be a tropical atmosphere. So street ponding, isolated street flooding is the biggest threat. The extended 60% chance again on Saturday, and then we begin to back it down a little bit, but rain chances never go away. We're gonna stay in this summertime pattern that we've been in where we get a chance for an afternoon thunderstorm just about each and every afternoon through the weekend and through the bulk of next week. Okay, that is where we stand here at, it is 8:12. Our next live broadcast at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll get an update on Aaron by 10 o'clock from the Hurricane Center. And then don't forget in the morning with rain chances elevating, we could have some showers even going in the morning. Uh, Cheetah will have the uh, weather update, update on the storm in the Gulf to see if it's been able to increase in strength or get a better chance of developing. That will be from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then on plus from 7 to 9 a.m. we stay live all morning long. So we'll see you for our next live broadcast at 10 o'clock.